So uh, OpenStack, that looks a little stretched on the screen. Um, I'm not actually here to talk about OpenStack. When I was asked to do this, OpenStack didn't exist yet and was kind of just a, uh, a, a notion in, in my head and in the head of several other people at, at Rackspace. Um, I'm here to talk about really one of the, my driving reason for, for wanting to be a part of OpenStack. Um, and that's really about leveling the playing field, creating uh, competitive markets. It's something that Apache has done very, very well uh, in, in the web serving web hosting uh, industry, and it's something that we really need in, uh, in cloud computing. Since, um, since this is a short 10-minute talk, um, I'm going to do some administrative stuff at, at the beginning to tell you who I am and where to get a hold of me. Um, even though I'm with OpenStack, I'm still a racker. I still work at Rackspace, and I'm uh, very proud to do so. Um, and I would like to, anything that I have to say that is the least bit intelligent sounding, I probably owe to Simon Wardley. Um, if, you, if anyone has seen him talk, you, the, the uh, kitten with the gun will mean something to you. So thank you very much, Simon. Um, IIS is actually not rocket science. If you want to do this at scale, there are really not that many ways to do it. Um, people in isolation sitting in different basements and in different companies come up with the same way to do it. You have messaging, you have an API, you have to talk to a hypervisor. It, it's, it's not hard. But what we have right now are a bunch of companies that are all reinventing the wheel. If all we do is reinvent the wheel, the part that's easy, we'll never get the chariot, let alone the space shuttle. I mean, how much innovation is there left in the wheel? And I say that in the IAS platform, there's not that much innovation left. We're gonna do it once, and then people can actually work on their real secret sauce. Now, what, what, do you, what can you do to actually make your company, your product different? You know, it's not gonna be talking to a hypervisor or having a, a slightly different API or a slightly different scheduler. I mean, all that stuff is simple. So this basically says the same things I just said, but right now, if you are basing your company and your product on closed source code that I can take six guys in three months and reproduce, you need to come up with a new business model right now because I think it's over. I mean, I think we're, my goal is to disrupt that. Uh, we're never gonna innovate and never gonna come up with anything interesting if, if that's all we do. Um, I think the best example is, is web hosting and creating a competitive market. Because of Apache and Linux and MySQL, it's completely an even playing field. You know, a 15-year-old kid can start serving whatever 15-year-old kids would serve in their parents' garage, and they can, they can come up with a good idea, and they can compete with the likes of IBM, with anyone that's, that's serving, with Rackspace. I mean, it's, it's completely open. It's up to you to come up with ideas and, and to innovate. And what if Apache didn't exist? If Apache didn't exist and there was no ubiquitous open source web surfing platform at all, what would the world be like? What would Microsoft be doing to us with IIS? How much would that cost? You know, would, would there be, would every single hosting company have some super special web server that only they had? I mean, what kind of world is that? I mean, in the end, because we all start at the, the same level, we actually have to treat our customers nicely. And that's one of Rackspace's premises. You know, we, we have fanatical support. We treat our customers well. Well, if no one else is on the same level with you, if you're, say, right now, maybe in, in Amazon, you really don't have to care about your customers. You don't really have any competition. So that's the end of my first part. Let's level the playing field. That's, that's what we intend to do with, with OpenStack. Um, I wanted to go on and talk about, is open source enough? Is it enough to be completely open with your code? Um, 
I think the answer is, is no. I think that you need open source, you need open development, you need open design, and you need open community. The four opens we're calling them at, at OpenStack. Um, I think that I'm an open source sort of purist. I, uh, I tend to uh, rail against the open core model, I, especially in the way that it tends to be actually implemented. Um, I think it encourages people to try to make their open source products poor quality. And it also tends to make them not accept patches or improvements in, in, in their products. So I think that it actually really, really hurts the product in general. And it's bad for everyone. So open source is important. Open development. If you want it to be more than uh, code escrow, uh, open code escrow, then you have to actually let people see your development. If you let people see your development, then they can participate, they can actually help you QA. If you're an implementer, you can, you can follow what Apache's doing and see that, hey, they're making a major change that's going to affect me, I need to get involved. Um, it, it's, you know, it's, uh, it, it's just a completely, different, uh, a completely different model. Another thing that we're trying to do is encourage small commits so it's easy to follow it. So that's the open development. Um, Really, the most important to me is open design. Even if I let you see my development, if I don't let you be part of it, then it's, it's just me. Then it's just our, our product and you can implement it. If I let you be a part of it, you can help enhance the vision and you can make it yours too. Um, and the last is, is open community. Um, it's not just about being transparent. A lot of the standards bodies are transparent, but you can't affect them. You know, seeing what they do isn't enough. Uh, you want to, people need to be able to get involved and be a part of the governance of, of a project. And I've finished two minutes early. I thought I would uh, try to take questions, hopefully not about OpenStack, uh, at least especially technical things, but uh, if anyone has any questions, I'll take them now. Any? Immediate questions? Yes. Yeah, hi, my name is uh, James Waters. Uh, my question is regard to the great debate we saw between Sam and Benjamin this morning. What I read from your comments is that essentially we've reached that point of maximum utility and breakthrough utility for customers, allowing kind of a consistent behavior. Are you of that opinion? So in, in, the, in, in a core like fabric, a, a, a fabric that does nothing but send messages and says create uh, VMs, yeah, it's not that exciting. That's not where the exciting bit of cloud is. You know, creating a VM, not that cool. You know, do something better with it. Uh, so yeah, I think so. I mean, I think that uh, you write a messaging layer, have an API, create VMs. There's not that much innovation there. That doesn't sound good for VMware. So um, on that note, please uh, uh, put your hands together and, and thank Rick Clark. Yeah.